So um, today we have Miss Nina Terol um, from uh, Talino Venture Labs. She is the Chief Marketing Officer, and she also studied at the Ateneo de Manila University, um, graduating with a degree in AB Communication. Um, now, if you don't know, later this month we will be hosting a special two-day online live event called Hiatus by 7:30 Lectures, a series on entrepreneurship. On the first day, on August 29, that's a Saturday, we will be covering the student entrepreneurship phenomenon. While on the second day, August 30th, that will be a Sunday, uh, we will be covering entrepreneurship on a much more larger scale. So entrepreneurship in the post-COVID economy. Uh, so don't forget to check that out. Miss Nina, thank you so much for being with us here today. So how was college for you so far? You took up AB Communications in Ateneo. Yes, um, AB Communications, and I actually also minored in Hispanic Studies. But wow. don't ask me any Spanish anymore. It's been so long since I last <laughs> practiced. Good. What organizations did you join in college? I was in the Sangunian for most of college. Uh, but I was also very active in ORSAM. So the Logistics Committee, mm-hmm. LOGCOM. I was, I think, in LOGCOM for also about um, two or three years. I was also, for a while, I also joined Ateneo Lex, which was the legal management organization. Yeah. I had dreams of going to law school after that and then i was also involved with the ateneo management association and of course uh you know casa was the communication art society um of the ateneo it wasn't very active at the time and i think it's no longer existing now but sangu was really where my heart was for for most if not all of my college years ds org talaga <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yes actually my my friends used to tease me that i was Parang AB, ah, at the time it was called the Central Board, the CB. So they used to joke mm-hmm. that I was ABCB minor in com. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope uh, I've more than made up for it now in my career. <laughs> you come from Talino Venture Labs. Um, can you tell us about the company? Yeah, so Talino Venture Labs, it's quite a new animal in the private sector. So it's only quite recently that the world has seen the likes of startups and startup incubators and what we call venture builders. So Talino Venture Labs is one such entity. So we're a startup building other startups. I guess that's the easiest way to describe it. Um, in at, at our core, we're a technology company. Um, and what we do is we build other startups in partnership with you know other large corporations or conglomerates. Um, but we always... Uh, for for these uh, startups, you almost always have a joint venture partner, but we also have our own initiatives and our own products. So Talino also builds its own te- technology solutions, and as you might imagine from the startup world, it's quite fast paced uh, and of course very technology driven. Mm-hmm. So it's a very very exciting space to be in. Can you give us examples of the projects Talino is involved in? Okay, yeah, there's a lot, but the one that I think is most relevant to you know, and pretty much every Filipino today is called mm-hmm. Safe Pass. So, Safe Pass is a uh, at its core, it's a digital contact tracing solution. Especially now, right? with COVID, um, there is really the need to keep our physical spaces safe and the need for people to contact trace. So, uh, right? when you go to coffee shops or other restaurants now, or even banks, uh, you're asked some health questions. Uh, they keep track of how many people are in the establishment. So, Safe Pass makes it, auto, you know, digital and um, you know, quite automated to do all of that. So that you know the the restaurant owners, the entrepreneurs, the managers of the, those locations can be more worry free. That at least when people enter their their establishment, they know that there are no symptoms, that they're keeping mm-hmm. within the maximum capacity mandated by government, and that in case there's a COVID nineteen incident, they're able to contact trace more efficiently. Mm-hmm. You know, there there's so many challenges now, uh, and we have so many projects and startups. But I think this is the one that will be most relevant to all Filipinos at this time. We'll actually link um, Safe Pass in the caption uh, of right, our video thank you. here. So, can you tell us a little bit more about how your business was before COVID and you know after the quarantine? That's a really good question. Um, 
prior to this whole pandemic, so Talino had about three startups in it in its portfolio. We call ourselves an inclusion tech venture builder. Uh, inclusion tech being the keyword because we always believe in building technology solutions that are very accessible to the masses and really making life easier for them. So we have uh, an insure tech, so an insurance technology startup called Saffron, which aims to make all sorts of insurance, you know, bite-sized insurance accessible to ordinary people. Because you often think of insurance as expensive, it's difficult, it's diba? it's boring, it's so easy, uh, it's ho- so hard to understand. Uh, we also have a um, a fin- an inclusive fintech called Ascenso, which makes it super easy for um, the members of a large, uh, you know, the largest microfinance institution here called Card to access their loans. So just using chatbot, mm-hmm. you know, a nanay with a sari sari store can get, you know, 5,000 pesos in as little as one hour. She doesn't have to fill out forms, go to a bank. So it's really made things so much easier for that segment. And then we have a legal tech startup called Unawa, which makes it easier naman for businesses of all kinds, you know, to be able to transition to the digital economy much faster. Um, and that was even before COVID, diba? And then when COVID happened, we realized that, all the more, there's a need for all these kinds of products. Everything that makes life, business, protection, loans so much easier mm-hmm. and so much ac- more accessible yes. to people. What we also did was, you know, before COVID, maybe we were around 15 to 20 people in the office, in the whole company. Uh, now, in the post-COVID situation scenario, we're about approaching 40. Uh, already, wow. we've doubled in size during the pandemic because... Yunya, there was a heightened need for our products and services. We also started building more products and services. We hatched two startups also in the Middle East um, and mainly mm-hmm. catering to these COVID and beyond scenarios that people will really need more digital solutions in yeah. many other areas of their lives. It's really nice to hear that you know there are certain um, companies that you know, despite the situation are actually you know, not only, you know, try to make money in the street, but also try to help the situation by, you know, helping different people, you know, through your inclusion tech, as you mentioned. Now, um, as a enterprise venture builder, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs today? Like students and, you know, ad- people who have already graduated mm-hmm. from college, like, what advice do you have for them? Well, first is to know that the world has really changed. So, Any and all of our assumptions about how the world works now has been, Mm -hmm. has drastically shifted. So now is a time for also taking a step back and seeing, okay, how else might the world change in a post, parang post, post COVID world, diba? Mm -hmm. So there is the post COVID scenario immediately after this, but there will be other changes happening beyond this. And I was just in a discussion earlier where, you know, some people were also saying that this is not going to be the last pandemic. So Mm -hmm. there will be others and other crises. So I think for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs are going to be very special and they will have a special role in all of these because it's entrepreneurs that build solutions, Mm right? That's what makes, you know, innovation um, very, very, um, I think, relevant also to entrepreneurs. So I will encourage those who are just beginning their entrepreneurial journeys or who are already there to start thinking about what else might the world need in the near future or in the next, you know, two years or so. And, you know, start developing solutions for that kind of a world because it's going to be very different now. And then, you know, um, do more reading, try to see what else um, we can do. And it's also an opportunity to do things better. So if there were some systems that we think are broken that needs to change, this is our opportunity to change it now. With every crisis also comes an opportunity. And this is really where entrepreneurs can step up. Yeah, and I see the value of, you know, not just tech in this entire yes. COVID situation. And, you know, it's really helped me personally. I mean, the fact that, you know, we're doing this all online, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. moreover, like with the insurance and many other, you know, industries like finance, the, you know, have their fintech. There's really that premium in tech 
uh, especially now. And I'm really happy to see you, you know, contributing in that field. So again, thank you so much, Miss Nina, for joining us here.